Hello, I'm Davis, and I'll be presenting our work Trace and Pace on Controllable Pedestrian Animation. In this work, we're interested in realistically generating pedestrian animations in a way that's easily controllable by a user. So we want a system where a user can constrain the trajectories of pedestrians, things like goals to reach and obstacles to avoid, and get realistic full body motion as output. And this is useful for applications like animation and synthetic data generation. For this purpose, we developed a data-driven system that has two main components. The first is Trace, which is a diffusion model that generates realistic trajectories and is guided at sampling time to meet user controls like avoiding obstacles and going to goal locations. Our second model, Pacer, is a robust RL controller trained to control a physics-based humanoid character to follow trajectories from Trace. Together, Trace and Pacer enable simulated pedestrians that can handle variable terrains dense crowds, and urban street settings. Next, we'll briefly look at how each of these components work, but for full details, please see the main paper. Let's start with Trace, the trajectory diffusion model. Trace is a learned model that generates future trajectories for a pedestrian through denoising. As input, the model takes in random noise that's treated as an initial future trajectory. It denoises this trajectory condition on the past motion for that pedestrian, the motion of its neighbors, and a map, which gives information about sidewalks, obstacles, and streets in the scene. Trace is trained on actual pedestrian data, which allows for it to generate realistic motion that reflects real-world pedestrians. But how do we enable user controllability with this model when neural network approaches are typically bad at meeting constraints at test time? Well, diffusion models are actually pretty well suited for this through what's called diffusion guidance. And in our case, guidance uses differentiable objectives from the user, like go to a goal waypoint, avoid collisions, and travel in a specific social group. These objectives are used to directly perturb the denoising process to encourage sampled trajectories to follow user controls. In more detail, denoising is an iterative process that starts from random noise and ends in a clean trajectory. So trace is applied at every step of that process. It takes in a noisy trajectory and outputs a slightly less noisy version of that trajectory at each step. Now let's say the user specifically wants the future trajectory to go through a waypoint location. Well, to achieve this, guidance will be applied at every single step as part of the usual denoising process. Intuitively, guidance nudges the trajectory at each step so that at the end of denoising, it meets the user objective. So looking at one denoising step in particular, the denoising network first predicts a final clean trajectory from the noisy input. This prediction may not be close to the desired target, so guidance will be used to push it towards the objective. Uh, to do this, the guidance loss computes how close the trajectory is, and then the gradient pushes it towards the target. And doing this repeatedly throughout denoising allows the sample trajectory to meet one or more user objectives. As a standalone planner, Trace can generate realistic trajectories that follow several user controls. For example, here on the left, guidance is used to avoid collisions between agents, and on the right, obstacle avoidance is achieved while going to specific target locations. Given the trajectories from Trace, we now need to lift them into full body animations. This is where Pacer comes in, which is the learned humanoid controller. Pacer is a physics-based character controller that's trained to follow trajectories and create realistic full-body motions. So at each time step of simulation, the policy takes in the trajectory to follow, the current state of the character, which includes pose and shape, and finally, observations of the surrounding scene. As visualized here, these observations are a top-down height map that includes both terrain and dynamic obstacles like other agents, and this makes the policy interaction aware. From these inputs, the policy predicts the action to take to control the character, which is given to a physics engine that updates the scene and state observations accordingly. Pacer is trained in simulation using reinforcement learning based on the adversarial motion prior or AMP framework. In particular, example character motions in the form of a mocap dataset are given to a discriminator, which judges how well motions from the policy reflect the motion characteristics from the mocap data. This gives a reward that encourages realistic movement. 
Meanwhile, the simulator calculates how closely the generated character motion follows the desired trajectory, which gives a task re reward. And together, these provide the main learning signal to train the policy. Training is carried out in Isaac Jim to simulate over 2,000 characters in parallel on a variety of synthetic terrains like you see in the image here. This large-scale, parallelized training has many advantages to it. For example, since the policy is aware of surroundings through the height map input, it can successfully handle terrains with rough slopes and steps. It can also avoid collisions when passing closely to other agents since it is trained in a multi-agent setting. Another advantage arises from using random body shapes during training, which allows Pacer to handle a variety of characters, both short and tall. And finally, training uses randomized procedural trajectories, which makes the policy robust to varying speeds and sharp turns like you see on the right. So bringing things all together, Trace can produce realistic pedestrian trajectories that meet user constraints, and Pacer can follow these trajectories with a physics-based humanoid character. This forms a closed-loop pedestrian animation system that's useful for many applications. In these examples, Trace uses diffusion guidance to plan trajectories that avoid obstacles while going to a goal waypoint. Then, Pacer carries out these trajectories successfully on the full humanoid in simulation. The system can also be used to simulate dense crowds of 100 pedestrians as shown here. Characters move realistically and for the most part are able to avoid collisions with each other, and this is thanks to using guidance in Trace as well as the interaction awareness of the Pacer model. Additional user controllability can be added to the crowd simulation with guidance. Here, groups of agents are defined as social groups that will tend to travel together. We see that characters with the same color arrows above their heads come together and move as a group as the simulation progresses. Since the characters are robust to many types of terrains, we can simulate pedestrians in street scenes where they successfully handle curbs and slopes. Additionally, we can target the motion to textured characters, which could be used to generate synthetic data in urban environments, for example, for testing autonomous vehicles. In summary, we've presented a controllable pedestrian animation system that's useful in a variety of applications. In future work, we'd like to make the system real-time by speeding up diffusion and extend the diffusion formulation to full-body control to enable more interesting interactions with the environment. Thank you, and please check out our poster and paper for more details.